right, today we're going to talk about plugs, coil packs and HT leads and what you need to look out for. This is a subject that I've actually touched on uh, a few times but I thought I'd want to go over a specific video about it because a couple of people have actually asked me questions regarding this uh, and it is a good subject to talk about because it is a common failure point of these cars. First of all, in a Mark 1 Focus, you will have a coil pack if you have a petrol model, as vice versa. The actual ignition system is a sequential ignition system. So it's not wasted spark principles like a lot of cars in that time where they fire twice on the same cycle and one of the fires is absolutely useless. It doesn't do anything. It just fires for no reason whatsoever. But this is sequential, so it's actually more efficient. But basically, you have two types of coil pack. Now, I'm just going to show you this one that I've got fitted. It is the newer type of coil pack, and I have it down here. And I'm going to show you this now. This is the newer style of coil pack. A lot of Mark 1s have got these now, but they didn't have originally. Originally, you'd have had something like this. Now you can tell the difference between the two. The one is a much more shorter body, whereas this is quite a fatter, uh, it's got sort of a fatter body and fatter legs. Now that requires longer screws in order to fit this. Now, this, the screws will most likely come with the new ones. But why did Ford change the coil packs? Well, it's simple. Coil pack failures on Mark 1 Focus were very, very evident with the original style coil packs that I've shown you, okay? Now, my particular car, up until two years ago, had that original style coil pack, and so I decided to do some preventative maintenance and actually switch it for this unit, which is a Bosch unit. This unit, which is a Delphi, and I got this off a scrapyard car, I can tell you now, this weighs exactly the same as that. It is basically a Bosch unit without the Bosch name and Delphi stamped on it. That is simply it. In fact, I think there's only a few manufacturers that make these new coil packs. I think Bosch is the main one. I don't think there's any others. But I believe that Delphi have just put their name onto a Bosch coil pack. It's the same coil pack. And a little known fact when you're looking at coil packs, the Bosch coil pack is a genuine Ford one, because they make them for Ford. They made the original ones for Ford, the ones that were very prone to failure, the one I showed you in the picture just now. Now, it is a common issue that many Mark 1s have suffered from, and usually people down the years have done the usual thing where they've just skimped and bought the cheapest coil pack they can ever imagine. I mean, we're literally talking about £15 for a coil pack. That is far, far too cheap. If you're buying coil packs for that price, I can guarantee it's one of these Chinese ones. They are absolute junk. They weigh absolutely nothing because there's hardly any coil material in them. The engines are run like a dog or run not quite as good as what they should do. And they just won't last at all. In fact, you'll be lucky to get six months out of one. But pretty much from production, the, the original coil packs were causing quite a lot of failures. They weren't built to a great standard. Um, I think they were pretty much marginal in terms of how they were. Ford knew the problem, but they didn't actually get around to doing it until within Mark II production, probably in the middle of Mark II production, when they actually asked owners, can you reduce your spark plug gap? from 1.3 millimeters, which was the original specification for spark plugs on these cars, and reduce them to one millimeters. Now, why would they do that? Well, I'm gonna show you a spark plug here. The gap is absolutely critical to how a coil pack actually works, because that spark has got to jump from the center electrode to the outside electrode, okay? That gap, if it gets bigger, that means the spark has got to jump even further. That means that that coil pack is going to work even harder. Now, that, for the original coil packs, well, 1.3 millimetres, was way too much. It was making those coil packs work so hard 
for which they were very marginal in the first place. And Ford recognised that actually if you narrow the gap down a bit, it actually causes less failures or practically none at all. Now, I had to run my original core pack on one millimetre spark plugs for many years. I used, um, I think this is a NGK. Yes, it is. It's an NGK, this one. Now, I think this is a, a one millimetre one. And I had absolutely no problems. My original coil pack, I did sell it, otherwise I'd use it in this video. But I did sell it on after I actually took it off and replaced it for this Bosch one. Now, I will give you the parts number of the Bosch one uh, in the description. Or in fact, I might actually try and show you, which I can't because the blimmin' writing's too small. That is the one that you go for. That is the correct um, coil pack to replace the original. If you're looking to replace the original, it's cracked at the bottom. Usually the originals, they crack at the bottom, whereas there's this um, heat shrink material. In fact, on these, it's on here. But these are pretty substantial. And no, you can't buy a Mark II coil pack. Now the Mark II coil packs, I believe, are a little bit more substantial. Yes. As I was saying, in terms of Mark II coil packs, you can't actually um, use a Mark II coil pack on a Mark I. Now, I believe the Mark II coil packs are the uprated design. I think they came out around 2005, 2006. I think only the early Mark I focuses got similar coil packs to the Mark I's. Um, and then they uh, changed it to the uprated version. And then they started basically repairing customer Mark I coil packs with the new type as they went on, as customers came in with problems. But the advice was, if you've got a Mark I with a coil pack, with its original coil pack that still works, they would advise you to change the spark plug gap or just basically narrow it down or get one millimeter spark plugs. I'm gonna to talk to you about presetting spark plugs in a second. But that was their reasoning and that's why they did it. These new ones give absolutely no failures whatsoever. They are uprated and they should last a heck of a long time. Now there is one thing that people forget about coil packs. They may not have failed, but they do wear. Now my original one, when I replaced it two years ago, the car had done about 80, 88,000 miles. And when I changed it for the, the Bosch one that's on there now, the difference was ridiculous. I hadn't changed the spark plugs or the HT leads. The difference was like night and day. It picked up at 2,000, 3,000 RPM. It just picked up where it didn't before. There was a bit of a flat spot. I didn't realise there was a flat spot. But this one identified that. So it's very evident that coil packs, even though they work, over time they do wear and they do need replacement. It is a wearing item. They, it's not a service item. But it is something that I'm afraid you do have to replace probably every, I don't know, 100, 150,000 miles. I would say mine had a hard life at 88,000 miles, a lot of short town driving. It's not really necessary to change it at that low mileage, but it depends how your car's been driven and how much you know about the car's life. If you're not sure and you've got the original coil pack, I would absolutely advise today that you buy this Bosch one because you will be quite surprised about how much difference it makes. And secondly, if you've got one, an original one that works, just put it in the boot as an emergency backup. I'm sure it'd be great to get you home, but the truth is, I don't think you need to worry about these Bosch ones. I think they will last a very long time. Now, the main reason I can only assume a lot of these coil packs, the original ones that is, have gone south, is because people, one, have not changed the spark plugs regularly enough. I don't necessarily believe it was just because people were running their cars with 1.3 millimeter spark plugs. I do think it was because people were not actually changing the plugs on time. Because if you think about it, when spark plugs get old, the, the, these, the, that center electrode actually wears, and if it wears, the gap gets bigger. So effectively, you might be running on a, a one millimeter spark plug gap and you think you're okay, but that plug hasn't been changed in a few years at least. And you've done, what, 20,000 miles on it? For a copper spark plug, that would have worn. 
That won't be one mil now. That'll be like 1.1, 1.2 at least. It might even be 1.3. So effectively, you've got a spark plug with the same gap as a 1.3 mil spark plug. And that is going to cause your coil pack to fail. So a lot of the time, it is just simply making sure that your spark plugs are changed regularly. Now, even with this new coil pack, I would take that advice. Spark plug changes are good for the coil packs because that means that the coil packs are working within their parameters. They're not overworking because if they're overworking, they're going to wear out prematurely. So that is a major top tip. Change your spark plugs every two years. Like I said in the oil change video, I change my oil every two years, maybe a bit sooner. Every time I change the oil, I actually change the spark plugs. They're copper spark plugs. There is absolutely no need to skimp. They are cheap enough as it is. And then people ask, can I use these expensive iridium plugs? Um, yeah, you can, but it won't really make much difference. The thing is with iridium plugs is they're marketed as having an extremely long life. And the truth is they do last longer than copper spark plugs, okay? These spark plugs probably need changing every three years, uh, ideally. I mean, I know some people don't do that, but as I said, that's not a good idea. You can use iridium plugs um, and they will probably last double that at least and double the amount of mileage you'd expect. I mean, I've known some people to run their Mark 1s on iridium plugs for 40, 50,000 miles and uh, over a six, seven year period and they're still okay. They don't wear as much. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, that would actually be an ideal solution if you didn't want to change your spark plugs every so often to protect your coil pack. The truth is, though, a lot of people buy these plugs not because of the longevity exactly, but because they think it's going to give them additional performance. And they don't. That's a complete myth. If, you, if I fitted Iridium plugs now, I would see absolutely no differences. And do you know why you'd see no differences? So, example, that coil, pot, that coil pack, produces 10 lots of power. The HT leads transfer that 10 lots of power to the plugs. Those plugs can only use 10 lots of power. It can't, they can't produce their own electricity. They have to use what power the coil pack provides to create the explosion. So it's not going to be any more powerful. Whatever plugs you fit, it doesn't matter how, how much you know how expensive your plugs are what type they are they're still going to produce whatever power the coil pack throws at it it's not going to change the only differences are if the old um, spark plugs were really worn then you are going to notice a difference naturally but i can guarantee if you've got good plugs like mine in the car they've been in for about a year now and they're good plugs i will not see a total bit of difference if I fitted Iridium plugs. And that comes to the other point, HT leads. People always ask, can I fit Magna cores? Can I fit these, um, these, these um, high performance silicon HT leads, these eight millimeters? I'm like, yeah, you can, but what are you looking for? Oh, uh, I need a bit more power. Well, you're not gonna get it from these. I say again, that coil pack, it produces 10 lots of power. So the HT leads are only going to get 10 lots of power. It can, only <laughs> it can only transmit what power it gets on the coil pack to the plugs. So you can fit magna cores. You can fit whatever you like. You're not going to get any more power. That coil pack limits the amount of power that this engine basically provides to the plugs. And again, the only difference you're going to see if you fit a set of... 8mm silicon leads like MagnaCore. I say MagnaCore because it's the one that everybody seems to go to. You will see a difference if your HT leads are old and worn. And then people say, oh, I've got lots of power on my MagnaCores today. Everybody should buy them. No, no. Because I can guarantee these HT leads that I bought two years ago, these are genuine ones, by the way, and I don't think you can get them anymore. I was lucky to get these. These HT leads are in perfect nick. They've barely done any miles whatsoever. So I know if I fitted Magna Cores, there'd be no difference 
whatsoever in the performance of this car. And then you've got people who say, yeah, but it gives better um, suppression from other ignition components. Like, what suppression? These cars are not known for bad suppression. The, the differences would be absolutely minimal. The idea of suppression is that one HT lead isn't affected by other HT leads because of obviously um, EMF and electricity kind of escaping from the leads where the connectors are. That's not true. These HT leads are absolutely made to absolute high standards. The only reason that you would get suppression issues and power loss issues to the plugs is cheap, nasty HT leads, and they are around a lot. And, the, and these HT leads, you can buy them on eBay for less than 50, uh, 20 quid maybe. You can get them a lot of motor factors and they're absolute rubbish. One, they don't fit. These plugs fit nicely, the original ones, but a lot of aftermarket ones don't. Even the expensive ones don't. That's not really an issue, but the cheap ones are flimsy. They are nasty. I've put a set on this car before and they were worse than the originals that I was trying to replace after 85,000 miles. So no, do not go down that shop. Make sure that your HT leads are at least £20 for a set of four because then at least you're not buying the cheapest. And I often argue with if you're going down the OEM route of rubber HT leads, which are absolutely fine, there's no need to buy anything else, um, then make sure they're at least £20. There's some decent manufacturers out there. Just be a bit picky on where you go and you should be absolutely fine. But there is absolutely no need to buy 8mm silicon HT leads, including if you have an ST170. It's not going to make any difference because that coil pack only produces a certain amount of voltage and as long as your HT leads, if they are rubber OEM or silicon, if you really want silicon leads, because they do, the only positive about silicon leads is that they do last longer because they are a flexible material they're not affected by underbonnet temperatures rubber leads tend to be more affected but i have to say the genuine ones are brilliant but again i am lucky in that respect i am not like um I, I don't think a lot of people have got original leads on their cars now but that's absolutely fine and a little bit of useful advice now obviously i've got 1.3 millimeter spark plugs because i've got the new coil pack you might have the original coil pack still so you'd have to run on one millimeter spark plugs okay now whatever spark plugs you decide to buy whichever type ngks are fine ngks are the ones i've got here and this is a one mil spark plug which has not been in the car for a few years since i've fitted that but basically do not trust pre-gapped spark plugs in my experience they are wrong half the time so you're going to need one of these you're going to need a spark plug gap tool they cost pennies probably about two quid from the motor factors and basically we want to turn it over here i just show you there you go one mil so if you put the coin uh, <laughs> i say a coin a coin you put it between the center electrodes and if it slips past one millimeter it's two big if you want it to be one millimeter let's say so if it turns out as 1.1 then you need to bang it in just get a hammer bang the outer electrode in a few, just a few taps and that should do it if it's too big you get that um gap uh that gap tool and you literally get it in between the two where that circle is you put that circle in between and then you just pull that center electrode up don't do it too much because you can do it too much and then you have to bang it in. I've done that so many times. It takes a few goes and practices, but, you know, it's an old-fashioned tool. People used to gap spark plugs back in the day because I suspect that <laughs> refurbishing your spark plugs was a thing, like giving it a wire brush and a bit of a clean, then checking the gaps because old cars needed that and spark plugs were not as cheap as what they have been for the last 20 30 years uh, but the common practice now is just change your plugs it's easier you've got them out that's the hard bit you know what i mean um so i, I would just change them for copper ones I, I i you can fit iridium ones but as i say copper ones i've just made do with them and these cars run absolutely fine on them uh just bear it in mind every two years or maybe three years, depending on your mileage, just change the plugs as a, a matter of course. Unless your car does absolutely no miles at all, in that case, it can go on for longer. But that's all. Uh, a last word of advice 
um, I think you can see, I don't think you can see on mine, but basically, one of the long bolts on mine, well, not the long bolts, one of the original bolts on my coil pack actually snapped in this aluminium block that the pack sits on. That one of the bolts had actually already snapped. Somebody had actually had to go at removing the original coil pack years ago. Now, I'm pretty sure it was the original, but for some reason it was removed. And while the actual um, little short screws, torque screws, had actually snapped in that block. Now, I have got a spare block, but I'm not going to swap it over because that would mean taking the cooling system out. Now, I have actually got a bit of antifreeze just there showing, so I might have to have a look at that. Um, it's not leaking, but I think it's just a little bit less tight than what it should be. Um, but I will probably swap that over at a later stage. So be very careful with these bolts. Do not um, over tighten them when you're putting them back in. Snug is absolutely fine. And be very careful when we're releasing them. Make sure your socket is nice and square on the, on the actual Torx fitting. Now, most of these coil packs will come with new bolts. This Bosch unit came with brand new bolts. Um, I have got some spares lying around, but that is all you need to know. And I hope I've killed a few myths and uh, little misconceptions that go around on the forums as usual. That is the advice. I would just use copper spark plugs. Don't bother about silicon HT leads unless you want silicon because they, they tend to last more longer in terms of the material, but they don't provide any performance benefits. And with the coil packs, upgrade to the Bosch coil pack I will give the number out and then you'll have absolutely no problems and you can put 1.3 millimeter spark plugs in and obviously I will say this it is very obvious 1.3 millimeter spark plugs get a bit of bigger bang so you will get a little bit better performance a little bit better pickup you will notice it I suspect that down tune basically down tuning a spark plug to one millimeter is effectively making the car less powerful. I mean, for a hundred, a 1.6 hundred brake horsepower engine, you could be looking at probably less than 95 or something like that, probably 90. So it will be, it will have been running a little bit less powerful. So I think it's worth checking. If you're not sure, if you've got an original coil pack and you're not sure about your spark plugs, just whip them out. Just whip them out gently and have a look. Get one of these. Um, um, gauges and it will tell you how big your, your gap is I mean some mechanics can just look at the plug and see that it's too big it's as simple as that I can I've been around these cars years I know that that is actually that's actually perfect that come on focus in that's perfect that's one mil I can tell the electrode is pointing slightly down it's just at an angle a 1.3 would be much bigger than that um, and it'd be fairly obvious, but get a gauge and check it accurately and see what you're on. If not, change the gap if you want to reuse the plugs or just get some new ones. It's up to you. Take care, guys. I will see you very soon.